You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Hi! Welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. For 14 years, we have been providing our audience with entertainment industry career advice. Now this show is for you if you are pursuing a career in the entertainment industry or if you are uh, if you want to, or if you already are, we can provide you with tips, advice, and resource information on how and what it takes. I hate that I'm looking over here because that is so weird. Why does this, everybody complains about that, that they're forced to look in the opposite direction when the camera's over here. But for some reason, we cannot see ourselves. We have to look over here. Very strange. Okay. So don't think I'm avoiding eye contact. Let's just put Okay. So for 14 years, we've been providing uh, entertainment industry advice. And uh, if you're already pursuing a career in the entertainment industry, this is a great show for you too, because we have people on that are also pursuing it and they have excellent tips, excellent advice that you might not even have thought of. Now, the guests on our show, some of the guests on our show are Emmy Award winners, we have Grammy Award winners, we have Tony Award winners, we have celebrity uh, reality, I guess they're called celebrity, reality TV stars, they like to be called celebrities, the reality TV people now. Um, we have producers, directors, uh, gosh, so many. Uh, casting directors, we have literary agents, of course, actors, uh, singers, models, musicians, we have stunt people, we have uh, script supervisors, makeup artists, and we come with entertainment attorneys uh, around December because that's a great time to get an entertainment attorney. If your career is going so great, you're like, wow, I need to get an entertainment attorney. The contracts are coming. What are they doing? This is great, entertainment attorney. Now, if you missed any of our past shows, we have three ways that you can listen to any of them. Number one, uh, download the free mobile app on the App Store, the Google Play Store. Number two, we are on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Amazon Podcasts, Google, and Audible.com. Pretty much, you just go to Google, type, Priscilla Leona or Question Reality, and you're going to find us all over the place. We're all over. Uh, you can also listen to any of the past shows on the archive page, which is what you're listening. Well, actually, this is Facebook Live, so you have to go to the website. So you have to go to latalkradio.com and type in my name, Priscilla Leona or Question Reality. There's a drop down box. You, you know how to do it. You got it. And uh, it will show all of the uh, shows with the name of the guest and also their um, profession, which is really great if you're looking for a specific profession. It's there. And now we ask for the itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini favor of please subscribe to our podcast. We ask you that and to give us a follow and a like. We're on every social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. So just type my name again. You know what my tip is every week, branding, branding, branding. When you are starting out, you've got to make sure you keep it consistent so people can find you. So if you type Priscilla Leona or Question Reality, you're going to find us on Google. And give us a little thought. We all need a thought, isn't it? What the heck has happened to our world where we need a thumb, we need a like, we need a follow? I would highly recommend that you watch um, a Dark Mirror episode. Oh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was wild how in the future, everything you do, if you walk by someone on the street and they think you gave them a dirty look, they will press something and you will lose a follower. It's wild. Check it out. It's a uh, dark mirror. It's, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. So finally, if you want to be booked on our show, now this is where you have to listen because you have to go to another website. You have to go to our official website, which is questionrealityradioshow.com, questionrealityradioshow.com. And that's where you can submit to uh 
for consideration to become on, to come on the show and showcase yourself and your products and interview and give us all kinds of great tips and advice. You have to go to questionrealityradioshow.com, not the website you're on, which is uh, latalkradio.com. Again, questionrealityradioshow.com. And you can see all the upcoming guests. You can uh, read their profession. And that is, it, it, it's great. Great. Go over there. You can watch everything. And that's it. Oh, you want to go to the contact link. And you just, it's real easy. You just type your name and your website and submit. That's it. Now, on to the fun part. The guest. That's my favorite part. Um, This is a gorgeous man, by the way. Wow. He's a sexalito. He's sexy licious. And um, his name is Colin, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Deering or Daring, he will correct me. He is a writer, a director, a producer, and look, he's on now uh, in advance. Didn't even get to read your bio, okay? So he is from Tom's River, New Jersey. I partied in Tom's River in the 80s. I don't want to date myself, but they were rocking in Tom's River in the 80s. You weren't even born, but... I, I do know Tom Driver. And uh, he majored in English at uh, Dowling College in New York. And he loves, we have something in common. He loves to bury himself in streaming television, watching films, uh, reading comic books. Now, I'm not so much a comic book person, but I can appreciate it. And hiking. Now, Lord, you know, I haven't hiked since 72. I There's no hiking involved for me. But I can appreciate how healthy it is for you, uh, Colin. Now, he is, he wanted me to say this, he is eternally grateful to the devotion of the cast and crew of this project called The Loyalist. So welcome, Colin. Hey, how are you? Look how sexy you are. Do you have a mirror like right there where you can look at yourself just (laughs) to say, wow? I am so blessed. Do you do that? No, like Stuart Smalley, I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And gosh darn it, people like me. <laughs> oh my God. No, I had your, I met you. You were referred uh, through your brother, Rory, who is lovely. Oh my God. He's so chill and calm and peaceful. Where I'm so high energy, but when I'm around him, I feel like going, Namaste. <laughs> He's really, he brings a peaceful effect. So love Rory. Um, he's back in New Jersey now, right? Correct. Yes. I'm he's over there. He's there for the summer. He'll be back in uh, the fall. Oh, he's coming back. Cause you're in LA. He's on the East coast. Correct. Okay. Yes. Now let me, let me, uh, for everyone, if you could, I'm going to announce this again, but if you could check out, uh, Collins, is it daring or daring? No, you got it. Deering. 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 Uh, check out his site, which is theloyalist.com, the hyphen loyalist.com. You're on Twitter at the Loyalist USA, Instagram at the Loyalist, Facebook at Colin Deering. So just put that out there. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing uh, audio, his audio drama series, and he will be giving us, hopefully, Colin, uh, tips, advice, and resource information uh, on how you two could start your own audio drama uh, with, hopefully, a budget-conscious plan, because you know how hard it is. Everything in LA is so darn expensive, it's hard to get projects off the ground. So let me ask you this. Um, let's talk about The Loyalist. Now, I understand it's an episodic sci-fi audio drama set in the year 2053 during the Second American Civil War. And three soldiers are dispatched to protect the wealthy hiding out in a luxury resort in the Amazon jungle. Already, Colin, I am intrigued. I am like, what? I mean, first of all, a second a second civil war sounds very realistic in today's political mm-hmm. and cultural climate. So I see it coming, even though I hope I'm long dead before it starts, but I can see it coming. Um, but I it, and it's also a, a, a definite and realistic, I would say, 
idea that the wealthy would hire soldiers. They probably do that now, that they would be hiring soldiers to protect them and their gold bullion, everything and all their jewels, you know, around them. So why don't, for those that um, are not familiar with the show, they haven't seen it. First, I want to start out because I have ha I had a lot of people uh, when I announced you were coming on the show, I had a lot of people texting me saying, and these are people not in the entertainment industry. So they said, what's an audio drama? I said, we will ask Colin to explain, explain it. So for those, and there are still people out there who don't know what the words audio drama mean, can you please explain first what an audio drama is? Okay. Uh, audio drama, it's different than like a regular in interview podcast. It's a scripted um, show it can be anywhere from you know ten minutes to two hours depending on it what it is. Uh, you it has it entails different voices usually more than one but I, there's been some great ones out there that I just one narrator as well. Uh, some can be episodic, some are just one and done kind of specials kind of stuff like that. Uh, it's usually fictional. Um, it can be genre based. It can be any sort of uh, you know any sort of story you want to tell with that. Mm. Uh, so, so, so it's sort of like back in the old days, back in the forties, when they had the radio dramas, so those were radio dramas, but people who didn't have television, well, most people had television, but man, wait, no, the forties, they did not, they would listen to the radio. So there would be, for example, lots of shows where people would come on and they would act out murder mysteries and all kinds of stuff. So it's just the same as watching a web series, but you're listening to it, you're listening to it like on a radio, correct? Is that correct. right? Yes, yeah. There we go, yeah. All right, <laughs> so uh, give us the scoop. First of all, what prompted you to write this particular story? Uh, I, You know, I wasn't completely invested in audio dramas before I started doing it, but the, the allure of it is that you could essentially write you know, people want to make their own television shows and their movies. They want to do independent things, but it's very difficult to have the budget to do something like that. And when you when you write something that's just purely audio, there you do have you have all this um, leeway to kind of do whatever you want. So I wanted mm -hmm. to write like an episodic television show, but I also wanted it to be to be able to do whatever I wanted to do and write whatever characters I wanted to write in that in that way. And uh, the audio drama, despite not having any visuals, gave me the freedom to do that. Yeah, it's really, people, it is all of you that are considering coming to L.A., you want to be a star, uh, or, it is very expensive to do things, especially today. It seems like it's more expensive now after the pandemic. Um, God, you go buy a loaf of bread and you got to sell your firstborn to get a loaf of bread. So very, very expensive to to do film and uh, web series. So audio dramas, I think, are becoming extremely popular right now. If you want to write and just get it out there, you have everything you need on your phone, editing software. You have just, you'd have to Google. If you don't know how to do it, just Google it, you'll learn. Uh, but you can do it. And it seems like to get your feet wet, Colin, uh, I think that for people starting out, that would be the way to go. And the good thing is that you can do it anywhere. You don't have to move to LA to do an audio drama, right? Correct, yeah. Uh, and also you can uh, you know, get people at different times. Everybody doesn't have to be there at the same time. You can, you can do, you know, just record someone one day and then record someone the other day. Uh, I was, at first, I was kind of married to everybody being in the same room at the same time because I thought the performance, you get the energy. And it is really good. But yeah. if, you, if, you know, with, you're working on a budget and people have schedules and families and stuff like that, this makes yeah. it a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, the gas prices are outrageous, at least here in, Hall in California. And uh, so many people work on different schedules. So audio dramas really give you an opportunity to just have people work. No matter, they can be in Europe, they can be anywhere in the world and uh, participate as an actor or whatever you want them to do. Um, you um, obviously, we talked about it production wise, it's cheaper, but what are some other reasons that you feel 
audio dramas would be a good market to test your toe in other than what we just talked about anything else um you know you you are able to also um beyond just the budgetary reasons you are able with to to kind of do whatever you want you do have a creative freedom within there too and uh, mm -hmm. not just because the thing you you know you can hey i want to write a fantasy series hey i want to write a, a sci-fi series i want a, a mystery crime series you can kind of do whatever you want and you also with this too because you have such talented people involved with it you know one person could also do three different voices um Oh. Big mistake when I started was, oh, I need to have a different voice for every person. And I, I, I see I'm in some of these discords and a lot of people are like, no, this person needs to be this voice. No, you've got a, a, a depth of talent at your disposal and they can do a million different voices. Uh, and you can also record them all at the same time. Yeah, you can hire voiceover actors. You could get all kinds of voices. You could get one person to do every voice probably. Mm -hmm. Right? I have Correct. so many friends like Debbie Darabar Jerry Berry. She has she was the voice of um boy neutron uh remember that comic uh um, jimmy jimmy neutron yes yes, yeah. yes and i'm like you she's a female i'm like you did the voice of it and she could do like a baby voice i had her on my show and she was doing all these voices i'm like and then i had another friend on who is the official voice of porky the pig and i was just amazed at how many different voices they could do and he said if you're if uh the producer is smart you save a lot of money by hiring one person who can do a lot of different voices because apparently females can do male voices and vice versa these days so that is a very good point now get, let's get back to the loyalists what's it about tell us the exciting exciting stuff about it uh like you said it's about uh the american civil war the second american civil war in the year 2053 mm -hmm. uh there is uh, luxury resorts that are sanctuaries that are hidden. Um, so mm -hmm. the the very rich will go hide out there to escape the consequences of war. Um, mm -hmm. Partisans are very anti-wealth. Uh, they're the people opposing the founders who are very conservative. And then there's the very uh, liberal side, East Coast, West Coast, divide down the middle. And this, this story in particular involves three soldiers who are dispatched to replace a missing security squad down in Brazil, and it's in a crumbling kind of resort that had shut down a long time ago. Uh, and there's about eight loyalists, very rich people that they have to uh, take care of. And it ends up being uh, the first day they arrive, the general that's put in charge is murdered and they have to figure out who did it. Oh, so every week, uh, is it every week or once a month or? Uh, our it's with with the uh, the way our schedule's been a little uh, a little rough. Uh, it's I only have one season out. When I, when I was doing it was like every Friday. Um, there's 11 episodes out right now. I'm working on another one. Uh, I want to get a little more consistent schedule when I do it again, which is just drop every episode. You know, for in like uh, like 11 weeks in a row. Okay, so so you ideally you want to do it every week, but the 11 episodes are already up so people can just go there and listen anytime yeah it's those are up there yeah. and I, I plan to do uh like a, hopefully two more seasons of it and then finish it off and then work on another some other projects too Ooh. so where can we hear the loyalists because i know you're on a lot of streaming platforms give us some um you can go to um spotify you can go to stitcher you can go to um, SoundCloud, um, iHeartRadio, like you're on there too. I'm a, the loyalist is up on there. Uh, there's a bunch, um, forgetting a couple here. You can go off our website, which is the the hyphen loyalist.com. They're streaming on there as well. Uh, I can, I can, you put a link in my. Uh, so yeah, if they, if they type the loyalist in Google, hopefully they will be able to get there. And what about YouTube? Is it on YouTube? I didn't put the episodes up on YouTube uh, yet, but I, they are on Apple. They're on uh, Apple Music, so you can listen to them off Apple TV if you want to. Now that's Alexa. interesting. Why wouldn't you put it on YouTube for people who are going to say, why didn't you put it on YouTube? I'm already asking the question. Why? I know. I don't know. I don't know. I just didn't think of that as, uh, it, but there are a lot of the, especially the free episodes up there that are oh. on there to do it there. I wasn't sure if the, 
the space you needed to to pay for it or anything like that. But I, I will put eventually put them up there too. Okay, so there's no reason that or tip you could give the audience like don't put it on YouTube because no, that was it. There's no bias or oh they're gonna like really on uh, monotonizing your your film or whatever your episodes. Okay. Nothing so like that. You'll do it eventually. You just haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, got it. Okay, so um. So you have already written the ending. You already know how it's going to end, right? You already know. Yeah, I have an idea. I don't want to say it's completely no, right. Don't tell, don't tell us. <laughs> don't wanna, we don't want to do it, but you already know the ending. And um, <clears throat> is it a genre that you feel you're going to continue? Or are you the type of writer that does just that civil war? And then I'm going to do something totally different um oh, I, like, I like the science fiction and i do like fantasy uh i do okay. seem to I sort of uh, lean towards doing those and writing that even when i start to write something else i can put elements in there and sort of becomes that uh but i would like to write something that sort of takes place in modern day and you don't have to adjust uh people's the dialogue to yeah uh, those period pieces, my God, I love period pieces. I tend to watch a lot of foreign films and what they do in foreign countries. I don't know what kind of budget they have, but I watch a lot of uh, murder mystery, like um, uh, Call the Midwife and British. I mean, they have just an, just the budget must be so huge because these costumes are beautiful and the makeup and the hair and and the production value is so high and i think wow how do they do it what is going on but uh here for network television it is when you do a period piece my god you bet i don't even know they it's so draining financially on the networks they usually don't last they get tired of you know, sucking the money out. But, and it's hard to get um, authentic accents when you're doing stuff from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s too. It really is. So mm. now um, let's talk about your new show. Is it new Lady Orpheus? Is that uh, I'm writing it now. It hasn't, it hasn't come out yet or anything like that. Oh, it hasn't. Okay. No. Let's talk about it. I know it's a uh, fantasy mini series, right? Can you give us anything about what it's going to be on i think oh oh wait a minute i got it uh it's about a necromancer for hire i absolutely oh my god i loved that idea when i heard it a necromancer for hire that guy must make like millions of dollars who wouldn't want a necromancer now hold on colin because i got when i posted it I had people, I'm like, why can't you Google what a necromancer means? Don't ask me, just Google it. But people will do it. You know they will. So let me tell you for those who don't feel like Googling it. Okay, so I did it for you, but I knew what it was. But I got a really good definition. Okay, so um, a necromancer is a person such as a wizard or a magician who uses witchcraft or sorcery especially to reanimate dead people or to foretell the future by communicating with the dead. So in a sentence, it might be something like um, uh, a person is killed by a serial killer and is revived as a zombie by a necromancer. Is that right? Is Correct. That yep. That's it. Said? Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So tell us. Where did you come up with that? Because in a million years, I don't think I ever would have thought of the idea of a necromancer for hire. That is fantastic. So original. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to write a story for a while about, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, whenever a, a, a movie or a television show uh, is greenlit, it, nowadays it almost has to have a built-in audience, whether it's from a book or it's a sequel or it's a franchise. Yes. Uh, and I wanted to write a story about our dependence on nostalgia and, you know, our adherence to it. And I'm guilty of it as just as, as much as anybody else. I right. uh, see a movie or a sequel or like, you know, oh man, those Jurassic Park new ones, they look kind of sketchy, but I like the other ones. So I'm going to go see it anyway. Uh, but I wanted to write a story about us not being able to let go of the past in a lot of ways and using necromancy to do that is, is the way I wanted to write it. And I also wanted to, wasn't sure if I want, because it could easily be set in modern times, but I wanted to make the character immortal and just see how that's a 
through through the the centuries as it goes along that it's a standard where people some people just sort of can't let go of their past or their childhood or or something like that. Right. So so the, uh, obviously the main character is the necromancer. So he just do, do you have him like going through a time period for your for your series? Like he starts out in the eighteen hundreds and then you go you know, 1900s, et cetera. Is that what you're doing? Or? I don't want to have it. each episode will, will take place. Uh, it's, she will exist. It'll end in modern times, but I want each episode to take place like about a hundred years apart. Each one only mm -hmm. right. Like six of them. I want it to be like a one season kind of thing. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. I, I oh, started the female that. necromancer. Yes. <gasps> I like that. Girl power. Oh yes. <laughs> and, um, Oh, wow. I'm excited. So I'm sitting here visualizing. Oh, I can't wait. What, uh, what are you, have you, can you give us anything? I don't want to ask intrusive questions, but can you give us any idea of when it's coming out or anything? Hopefully, I'd say probably the end of next year. Cause I want to do some more loyalists first. So um, maybe I can coincide it and do it, start doing it. But by the time it's all edited and it's done, I was, I lucked out. Um, Cause I'm one of the, 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 the biggest expenses out here is, you know, is editing stuff. And you should, what you should do. Uh, and I, I lucked out. I had my wonderful brother. You're talking crazy, Rory. He edited all of the series for me. Uh, my friend Christina did the the uh, the pilot for me. But uh, he edited all of them for me and saved me, you know, thousands of dollars doing it. But what I would recommend if you are going to do this is, you know, just start off on GarageBand. Use um, there's like there's a bunch of websites like Freesound.com. You know. Um, it, you can get sounds from the Paleolithic era to futuristic. People upload sounds. You can buy them off Pond uh, Pond Five, I think. The one place that sells that generic YouTube music you can buy. They also sell sell sound effects as well. Pond P O N D. Yeah, Pond Five. It's pretty known for people who who, who need generic like YouTube music that's transitional or that. And it's they all have lots free? of web. It's free. You can just. Uh, no, no. The web. Some of them. Some of them. Um, I think some of the music might be free, but you do have to purchase the sound effects. So I would recommend going to freesounds.com or making your own. Occasionally you'll, there'll be a sound effect you need. Like I had a, my main character had like a limp to her uh, and I couldn't get that limp. She had that, like she hurt her foot and she had to do that and I couldn't find it online. So I literally had my friend Christina put on some boots and just recorded her walking down the hallway. You forth. had her do a Foley effect. That's called a Foley effect, people. When you hear those sounds in the background, you know that's a, that's called Foley. Well, that was creative. Oh my gosh! So so far, um, she's the main character, and is there another? Does she have a partner, or is she, she just goes and meets different people each episode? She has a sister that she's at odds with, um, mm. who they both have different perspectives on how to survive in a very male-driven world. Um, uh, she, the, the lead has a very, um, take no prisoners, doesn't want to take anyone's kind of shit. And her sister is more of a, Hey, you can kind of manipulate these people and move along, get what you want by pretending to give other people what they want. Uh, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of conflict there. She has an estranged husband. Um, and the God they get the souls from, um, is Hades, the, the ancient obsolete God of um, the Greek afterworlds. So she has to go down there with, and it made a, a kind of Faustian bargain with him to retrieve souls. Hey, I love this. So there are going to be some characters that we can get attached to, you know, how it, with anything, you got to have characters that people like, there's always got to be a comedian, somebody that's funny. That's the secret of success. That's my little tip. You got to have somebody funny or people, you know, it's just please try to insert people some elements of comedy. You can't have drama all the time. People get bored. People have enough drama. They want to laugh once in a while. So this sounds so the necromancer female. Are you able to say her name yet or no? Because her name is credit to the uh, actors. Eurydice, and she's named after Orpheus's uh, lost wife. Oh, and what is, can you say her name as an actress so we can look her up? Uh, I'm not sure if I could do that yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, 
the loyal to uh, an actress I'm using uh, in the loyalist, and she's amazing. She's really she she oh, we just we did a uh, like a Zoom read a couple months ago in the beginning of summer, and she's great. She's excellent. She's a theater actress out here named Sierra. Um, she she I think she actually helps run the theater of note over in uh, Hollywood. Okay. Um, and she's she's just great. And the one who plays her sister is named Danny Spring, who's also in the loyalist as the uh, the reporter. Um, and her strange husband is Brian Bernard, who is Steinbach in The Loyalist, if you listen to that. He's the comic okay. relief in there, and same here. Okay. So, oh, I want to talk about what you j just said. It just prompted a thought. Okay, so you had them work on The Loyalist. Now they're working on The Orpheus. I personally think that if you find a group of actors that work for you or professional or whatever your criteria is. show up on time you know don't do this but do that you should stick with them i mean all of the top a-list people they have certain actors they work with because that is complimentary to them however on the flip side i when i go to all these events industry events people often complain oh my god you can't get a part because it's so clicky and you know they always cast the same person over and over and i say well you know you gotta know you can depend and rely on an actor and it's really hard to find people that work for you what are your thoughts on that i think i think you are are right you should also you know give other people i had i mean i took from pool of very talented actor friends out here uh, i also use la casting um and you can you know you can put your what your budget is is like hey this would just be you're not being paid or this when their la casting was a, I have some of the great people you know i just happen to have people that were friends too kirsten day who was a friend uh my brother rory went to high school with her um with her husband and who lucked out and she did me a favor and played one of the characters there and she's she's on the Netflix Barbie show when she's the voice, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Fire Emblem video game. And she did be a crazy solid and, and, and played this character in this season for me. Uh, and I just locked out. And then, you know, you just use your, you know, to, yeah, you people that you're friends to, they can, especially with audio drama, you, they can do a billion different voices. I mean, Alex mm -hmm. Denny, who's in this one too, he does like three or four different voices for me. He's just always dependable. Some of these guys can just, it's, you really, it's, it's really, you don't ever underestimate your friends is what I want. To it's say. true. We had, uh, who's a friend of ours personally, his name is Vic Mignana and he is the pro screenwriter, producer, director of a show called Star Trek Continues at, which is wildly popular. I mean, this man has millions and millions and millions and millions of followers, but he also is a voice actor and he's like, considered a celebrity in the anime world i'm not familiar with that world but he is he can do like so many voices and that's just uh that blows my mind the whole i can barely speak english right so mm -hmm. but i really think that that you should if you're going to do an audio drama you have I feel concretely, I can say that you should look for voiceover actors first if you, you know, don't don't have anyone just off the top of your head. Now, what do, okay, so I'm coming to you and I say, Colin, I want to, you've inspired me. I want to do an audio drama. What are the first basic steps, like basic, like one, two, three, ABC that somebody would have to do? Uh, well, um, number one thing is if you can't get a studio or do studio time is, um, find yourself a sound engineer. Uh, my friend, uh, Brian got hooked me up with Seth Hackett who recorded most of them. And our friend Fabian did some of the rest of them, uh, over a pandemic. Uh, but you get a sound engineer to come check out your apartment, see if it's good for sound. If you mm -hmm. can't, you, you don't have studio or studio time, uh, which I think where you should go first, uh, but have him check out your apartment. And, you know, get him, get your sound engineer first to check out your space and see if it's worth, if it's ready to, I mean, it was some of the stuff we dealt with when recording an apartment is kind of ridiculous, you know, hold for plane so many times was said. Oh, yeah. <sighs> construction one day on pipes. It's weird. One time they literally were detonating a house across the street. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. That, that 
is true. I didn't think of that. And then you got to think of things like having the fan on or the air conditioner, or these are all things you got to think about. So make sure you're sound. So what next? Uh, I would make sure, you know, everyone is, when you're, everyone's casting, whatever, you make sure you kind of record them all at the same time. Be conscious of their time. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I, I, I gave myself this thing is that only make, these are, you know, 30 to 40 minute episodes, which is a lot of takes. If you do five takes, that's a lot. That's a day of someone's time. Yeah. Uh, so I do three takes of each one. Make sure you get what you want out of them and say at the end, like, hey, I need you to do that again. And re remember at the end of it, because it's audio and you have that uh, ability to edit things in here that you don't have with visual, you can be like, hey, I just need you to say that again in this tone, or that tone. Uh, and you just be at, be very conscious of your actor's time. They're very busy. I think that's, that's. The oh thing. yeah. Yeah. And hopefully you're paying them, but if you're not, you want to be providing them with food and snacks. I'm a exactly. Big yeah. Snack. We're big on the pizza and, 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 you know, make sure you get like a, a spread of coffee or whatever it is. Oh yes. I mean, I am a great lover as you can see of the fork and spoon. So I make sure that um, you you just have to provide if you if you're doing something like this and i've done many many films that are independents and shorts and things i make sure that the spread is hot let me tell you you got it because they care about food and nibbling you know they work hard a lot of people these days it's hard to even afford anything so i would highly suggest that you have a lot of food and snacks for these people right and options <laughs> Out here, everyone, you know, there's people that are, are gluten-free and, and vegan and always have that, that ready for you, too. I put a big sign up that said, no gluten-free people allowed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, real quick, um, what is your, okay, so they, so you got that down. Okay, so once you're finished, oh, recording, what do you record them on? Do you have them like stand in front of a mic or? So we do, I would hire if, you know, if you, like I said, if you can't get a studio or, or pay for the studio time, I would hire someone to record them. Uh, we set up a base. It was in Rory's bedroom, actually. Uh, and the mics were outside. We would do some room tone and all of that. And then we would um, record them from there. His sound equipment's great. It just be, some of it was music uh, equipment, um, but it was it was the mics were all tested beforehand. Uh, you just got to make sure your sounds right too. We did, you know, there's a lot of, of mistakes you learn, especially I'd never directed anything before this. And yeah. you really, you start to, at first you're doing, you're doing it wrong. You know, you're not doing it right. And you start to learn, Hey, this is how you approach. You don't interrupt them and say, say that again. You let them go through their take. Um, especially, um, if it, it, you know, if it seems like they're something they got really wrong and you're like, no, 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 you gotta go back and say that, uh, you wait till they're finished. That kind of uh, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. I, I would say too, with the, with the sound equipment, you know, when you're hiring the sound engineer, they'll be able to walk you through any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't want to interrupt the actor while they're doing their lines. They hate that. Uh, okay, so after you're finished, you have your material. I would imagine you start editing it, listening, edit, listening, edit, listening, edit, and then once you're finished and it's exactly the way you want it, you post it correct on your venues that's it yeah you usually get an rs feed rss feed and then you from there you can usually Let's talk about that what the heck's an rss feed you can you uh you can usually get one i mine from soundcloud because i use it it was pretty uh cheap but i think you can pay for one on any sort of website it's sort of like the central point where everything's coming from and then when you submit to like apple music or spotify they all take from that feed from there uh, and you can see how many views or listens you have uh, on there using it. Oh. All right, people, look up RSS feed because apparently that sounds important. I would imagine you have to have that, or else you'd have to. God, I don't know, Matt. I don't know what you do. You'd have to go and individually post to each site. I would imagine, right? We don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, this is for you. Uh, what is okay? So. Right now, The Loyalist is out. You're working on um, Lady Orpheus. That'll be out next year. And are you doing anything else? I mean, is what is your dream? Is your dream, I guess my question is, what is your dream career and what steps 
does one take to achieve this particular career that you're doing right now? Uh, I would like to, you know, I write in a very episodic television kind of way. I think that I, I do, I've written a few screenplays here and there, but they are very time consuming to do, uh, to write an entire movie. You, yeah. I know you have some experience with that. Um, and it, it takes a lot out of you and a lot of time to do it. Whereas with this, I feel, um, you know, you're invested in the characters, especially when you're continuing, you kind of have a basic, you know, when you write something you write, I always say, you know, write a bio for that character, even if, you know, it doesn't seem like it makes any sense, but then you have, you have something to feed off of nibble off of when you're writing to mm -hmm. do it that way. I always think that's the best way to do it. Uh, I would love to write for television or, you know, or film that that'd be the goal. You do have to get your foot in the door and get someone mm -hmm. to notice you. And mm -hmm. I feel like, doing like an independent audio drama, uh, you can get help. And you know, like I said, there's a service friends, that, um, I, people who help me out, they, there's there's this great audio drama uh, called Arden. It's about a, um, it's almost like a, uh, like a serial spoof with the two girls investigating a mystery on a podcast within the show, uh, start to fall in love with each other. And one of the writers, Christopher Dole, introduced me to a bunch of audio drama um, journalists and they spotlighted my podcast uh, at one point a few years ago too. And it really helped out a lot. And uh, it just, it was, it, it, it's, you know, it pays to be really, be nice to people. Yeah, uh, it does. And try know. to go and get as many interviews as possible because in this day and age, everything is blasted out on multiple social media sites and somebody's going to see you and say, like, I'm looking at you now, I'm going, is that Ryan Reynolds, people? <laughs> Is that right? Wait, let me do a double take, right? Because you've gotten that before. People tell you you look like Ryan Reynolds, right? Me? No, I actually have never. You're kidding me? You <laughs> look like you could be his twin. I'm not even kidding. I will take you it. Go look in the mirror, honey, because you do. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that's what I'm going to get. So, um, I so try to get on as many shows as possible. Do anything. Uh, are there any? Sites like, for example, there is a site I don't want to say the name, but they have popped up about five years ago, and they let people who have just written web series enter. And you, if you win, you get you know, of course, you get a nice plaque, but you get money, and you get a uh, a lot of recognition. And people have told me that because their web series was entered into this um, award show that they ended up getting asked to write uh, for Netflix, write original series for Netflix. Is there anything for audio drama like that for your own? I mean, there's, they've adapted a couple uh, podcast series into Netflix. There's one on Netflix show. There's, I forget what the horror one that, that's kind of big right now that came out a couple, I think beginning of the summer that was really popular, but there's a, um, Limetown, I think they made into a, a, a series. There's a couple of them there, uh, but yeah, the, do you, if your podcast, you know, that uh, is really a big hit, someone will want to make something uh, out of it. Especially if it's original, like with a necromancer, <laughs> right? It's, uh, it's there. Uh, so your dream is to uh, become a television writer. You want to write? Yeah, that's my. That's what I like doing. Write but, first, direct, produce, or just write. I would, I like directed, but my, my main passion is just doing the writing part of it. But really what I do recommend to people, there's probably a million people that are that out there like me that are just like, Oh, I just want to write. I just want to write, but you really should get out of your comfort zone and yeah. direct, uh, you know, yeah. and produce, produce and, and act because yeah. you want to get the experience of all the different, I mean, you're an entrepreneur people. So that means you've got to be the sales department, the accounting department, the marketing department, and you should know what each of these particular professions do. So you know what your limits are with asking people to do things or what you can ask. If you don't know, you don't know what, what options are available, right, Colin? Correct. Got to know, do it all. Try to do it all. Uh, what are uh, some of your bucket list projects like in the future i'd love to do a show about do you have any bucket list dream projects that you'd like to do you know i would just an original series would be a dream for me i'd love to do something just right. yeah. so just an original. be a showrunner on a show and, and you know 
write for it occasionally and guide other people on it. Because that's another thing too. I think a lot of people, when I've noticed when I have friends that first come out here and I, a little bit me, when I first moved out here is I can't show anyone this. They're going to steal my idea. They're going to do this and no one's going to do it. No one's going to steal your idea. And if they do, it, it, it's a fluke. So you should be open to write with other people and meet other people and pass ideas. I wrote the, the Loyalist pilot and some of the episodes with uh, one of my coworkers when I was first started out here at Tra Trader Joe's. So, uh, you know, be willing to, you know, talk. Collaborate. And, yeah, collaborate. Yeah. Because you never know who they know. Yep. Never know. Uh, now, in, I want in, to, in your opinion, what are the pros and cons of being a screenwriter or doing an audio drama? I'll let you decide. <laughs> the, uh, of, no, you're asking what the pros and cons of writing um, is? Other than obviously you got to find a job and support yourself and all that stuff. Other than financially, what are the pros and cons do you think? Oh, uh, it, it is very stressful at the time to do it. You're in the day and some people, you know, uh, will come late and you, it, and when, especially when, unfortunately the, the loyalist is just has the, the biggest problem is when I started off, I did use probably too many voices um, instead of taking advantage of the, right. the voice guest. but towards the end, I start to, you know, you learn from your speaks, you start to do that and you don't have to schedule, okay, this person comes at this time and that time. Um, so like I said, part of the, the good, the good mm -hmm. thing to do with, using someone that can do a billion different voices, very talented people is you don't have to be like, okay, your hours up. You need to get out of here. This next person's coming in to record. That's a great tip. I love that. I, I think that's a very vital tip. What piece of career advice would you have given yourself uh, maybe at the inception of your career, when you started to think about working in the entertainment industry that you think, God, if I'd only, thought about this for yourself personally or your career field what advice uh, you know stop waiting you know i think a lot of people procrastinate with uh hey i've got to wait till i'm done with this or this till it's perfect or i have this money for this this budget uh i, I recommend you go out and make it my, my brother was a great good inspiration he, he put out his web series his, his movie guy i know you were talking to him about that you know yeah. he he paid for it he budgeted it and that kind of thing do it. That's what I say, you know, don't, don't procrastinate and, and stop and be like, Oh, it'll happen someday. Or I needs to be the right person to see it. Make what you want to make. So everyone yeah. can see it. Don't sit around waiting for the phone to ring. Get mm -hmm. out there and pioneer your way. Well, I want to, uh, I want to go over your sites really quick again so that they can follow you. Because you, in this day and age, you have to get a little thumb. You got to be followed. It is so important to promote and promote and promote. And and when you think you finish promoting, promote some more. And it's so important to have a network of friends, right, Colin, to help promote you. So try to don't burn your bridges. A lot of people come out here and they have... Um, they don't really understand how the industry works and they just kind of flake out. A lot of people are flaky, I found personally, and that just doesn't work out over here. <laughs> All right, so go to the site, the loyal, the hyphen, if they just type the loyalist, is it going to come up or do you have to have that? If, little you, put, in there? if you put the loyalist podcast into, um, Google, you'll find it. It'll be on. It's like I said, it's on. It's on almost everything streaming that's available. Spotify. Okay, so theloyalist.com. He's on Twitter at the Loyalist USA. He's on Instagram at the Loyalist, and on Facebook at Colin Deering. So I am excited. I want you to go on my friend's uh, TV show. I'm gonna. PM me and remind me so that I can talk to him because I want to get, I think that that necromancer idea is just, he's, it's going to blow his mind. He's going to love it. And he's going to want to talk because all things necromancer fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want you to say goodbye to your fans. Yeah, goodbye fans. Thank you for listening. I, we have, you know, I, we're not the, the most popular show out there, but we, there are lots of people that will listen in and do it. And, you know, some people left reviews and everything like that. And it, I'm really appreciative. You know, I, I 
it's not like I have any sort of promotion. I don't have any television ads or anything like that. And there's people out there listening to my thing. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yes. And we are so appreciative that you came on the show because now we know that there's an original idea of a necromancer for hire. So I am all over it. So please keep me abreast of that and let us know so that I can promote it when it comes out. Okay. Will do. Thank All right, you. everyone. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, everybody, Thank you. for being on the show. Go to his website, theloyalist.com, and we'll see you next week on Question Reality. Bye! You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona right here on LA Talk Radio.